Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included with me, Lathrex. And of course, welcome to our base where some major changes have happened between the last video and this one. The reason being is I've ended up scrapping a video. That's why there's been quite a long delay between the two videos, and as such, a lot of stuff has happened. But the video turned out far too long, far too boring, and honestly, I made a lot of mistakes which I constantly had to fix, it wasn't something fun to watch. So here we are with the update to the base. The first change comes in the form of these coal generators. We now have two of them rather than one because we now have a much higher energy demand. The reason being is the thermoregulator and now we have an additional biodistiller. Now with the thermoregulator I've decided to place it over here which of course is cooling the entire base because eventually I'm somewhat tempted to try and make a steam refinement area somewhere over here to refine the contaminated water without using filtration, which is actually the main goal of today, but we're going to do it in a more roundabout way. We're going to dig all the way to the center of the world in order to find some magma. Once we find the magma, we can then use the heat from that to turn contaminated water into steam. The steam can then be condensed, and then we collect the superheated water. So, nice and good, but if I ever want to make it a little bit closer to the base so everything is nice and compact, we are starting a mini heat room over here. The next change is easily one of the best ones. We also now have four of these lovely little puffs, which means we are making a lot of slime. So much so, I actually need a fifth distiller just so I can keep up with using all of the slime I'm generating. I've also, oddly, got some more morbs. No idea how that happened at all, but now I have more mobs to try and keep up with the demand, and what I need to do is add a gas filter over here, a gas pump rather, so that I can pump out the oxygen and the hydrogen. Although it doesn't really make a huge difference, so it's definitely on the lower end of my list of things to do, it would just make it look a lot neater. So these puffs, the first one came from over here, as you can probably tell, me slowly trapping it closer and closer to the base, and the second, sorry, and the third and fourth one I got from down here. The third was trapped here, so that was pretty easy. Just dig straight down and it simply came up by its own accord. And the next one was somewhere in this region. Once again, doing pretty much the same thing. So then, let's get on with it. Let's go down until we find magma. So what we're going to do is dig from here because I'm turning this into a very small hydrogen trap because eventually we could very easily have a a hydrogen generator which does produce a lot of power with minimal effort although I am almost almost able to create enough coal per day to run both of these coal generators because I have unleashed the second hatch. So this up here is this hatch's room and of course we have the hatch over there. Both of them are eating dirt which we have a lot of and they are producing coal per day almost enough. If we had a third or fourth hatch, I believe we could probably make enough coal per day to keep these two running absolutely forever, which would be glorious. So then let's just continue to dig down. So let's dig from here. And we don't want to break into this, because otherwise the hydrogen may take this route. I will be trying to break into the hydrogen pockets as well as we go, so that we can use that lighter. So, just dig like so, and then continue down. Okay, everyone, back to your jobs. And let's cancel that and cancel those. Another thing I really need to do is to move these bio distillers over here and make a heat room in this section because right now we are running into a few heat issues in this area over here. We can of course keep on digging upwards which will cool the room by forcing the gas to be a little bit more dispersed but even so eventually we will need to do something a bit more permanent. 
From the five bio distillers, we are just about making more water per day than we are using. We're gaining water every day, but only by a very, very small amount. So really, getting a sixth in the future would be fantastic. We're also making more than enough algae, so we're absolutely fine for that. So as soon as we can start purifying the water using magma rather than using filtration medium, we're actually very close to having a sustainable base that, that will never run out, that will never die. Because we're making oxygen over here, the oxygen gets converted into slime, the slime gets converted into algae and water, which means I then have the ability to create unlimited pure oxygen over here. I could also freeze the contaminated oxygen, or at least cause it to liquefy, condense the contaminated oxygen and then that could be pumped back because as soon as that then evaporates it becomes pure oxygen but then you run into the issue of having super cooled oxygen absolutely everywhere and once again all we need to do is find a couple more hatches so I am on the lookout but they do seem a bit rarer than I would like and we could always just have manual generators Whilst my duplicants are busy building pretty much everywhere, what we're going to do is just set up the groundwork for the hydrogen generator later. And honestly, it's just this. We have a gas pump which pumps hydrogen into the hydrogen generator. Now, if this pumps in other gases such as carbon dioxide or oxygen or anything else, the gas is apparently lost. Now, I can't confirm this because obviously I've never used one of these before, but this is what people keep on telling me. If I pump in other gases, it vanishes. And in fact, I've heard multiple reports that some people use this system to clean their bases. They pump out carbon dioxide from the bottom of their base, this goes into the hydrogen generator and simply vanishes. Now another problem, which is kind of annoying, is that this suffers from some of the insanity of the water pipe system, in that you can pump in more than it can use and the excess is lost. But thankfully, with the hydrogen generator, it does have an internal storage, so it does have at least a bit of tolerance for this. As long as you don't pump it in too quickly, as in overall you only pump in let's say up to two-thirds full that issue won't occur but if you get all the way to full and then keep on pumping in hydrogen too quickly apparently the hydrogen can be lost although once again I can't confirm this right now but I will be keeping an eye out also who's really stressed and why why is Pam so stressed perhaps interrupted sleep perhaps walked in some horrible water when doing digging one of the two most likely so, I've had to do a little bit of work with our gas vents. For some reason, every time I put a gas vent here or here, the gas vent itself superheats to 97 degrees Celsius. I have no idea why it does this, and I can't figure it out. I've been watching to see where the temperature is coming from, and even when I turn off the gas pump and the cooler over here, the vents still produce temperature. They are actually the producers of the heat. So much so, it actually killed these two plants. For no reason, and I can't figure out what happened. Very odd. It looks like we're getting very close to our goal. The rock over here and the rock over here is very, very hot. Which means there's likely magma somewhere in this section. Soon we will have our steam room, powered by the planet itself. Change of plan, change of plan, and annoyingly we are going to have to dig through this contaminated water for this to work. On the upside, it will become steam, so hurrah for that. Do that for me, thank you. So the idea is, we have two ways, well, three ways of doing this, at least from my perspective. The first way is probably the simplest, and that's to simply pump the water down, which is being pumped naturally anyway by the bio distillers. This goes all the way down here and then drops off the contaminated water. It becomes steam. We then have a gas pump, which pumps it all the way back up and then we just allow that to condense in here. So this becomes the cooling room for the steam, the whole base is being cooled by this, so hopefully that will negate it, and we have our water supply simply deposited in our reservoir. The second way is very similar, and that would be to have a room somewhere in the middle in which we allow that to then 
condense, and then we pump the water up here, which will be a little bit cooler, but I have a third option, which I think will be better if it works. The idea is we allow the steam to escape from this room and then naturally condense somewhere over here. This way we don't need a gas pump to move the steam around. The steam is naturally condensing and then pooling somewhere up here if we use, for instance, the gas permeable tiles. This will allow the steam through but will not allow the water to drip back into the steam room. Then all we need to do is pump the water all the way up here and some of that heat will be lost to the environment on the and then the water ends up here. Probably the most complex way of doing things, but also probably the most efficient. This is one of the few positives to having so few minions. It takes so long to do anything, I actually have time to think about all this. I will be getting a new person very soon, as soon as a perfect um, duplicate is offered to me, but I still want to keep it to an absolute minimum. The less people we have, the less water we need per day, the less algae we need, the less food, and so the more realistic that I can make, well, just make a base which will last absolutely forever. So this is how I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to have a very large cooling column in which the steam can go up, eventually cool, and then drop back down. Once again, this will lead into an area which will have a liquid pump, which can then pump the water back up. And this will all be protected using the gas permeable tiles to not allow the water back into the steam room. Now, the question is, do I dig this further down? I'm assuming I probably should, since there is a few pockets of contaminated water which aren't yet turning into steam. Also, sadly, it turns out that this stuff, the lovely special material here at minus 272 degrees, is absolutely worthless for this goal because it doesn't conduct heat. It doesn't react with heat in any way. So this section here is going to be a bit useless, so I may need to increase the size of the cooling tower. Maybe like this. Since the steam will slowly heat this up, so the larger this is the better. That should work. I think this is going to work, and if it does, we have unlimited water because we will no longer have to use any filtration medium. Oh dear, that's a little bit annoying. We have essentially reached the bottom of the world because neutronium is on the very top and the very bottom of the world to indicate the end. And there is no magma here. It's incredibly hot, so it will still serve our purpose, but I've got a horrible feeling that the constant evaporation of water, simply draining the heat from here, will eventually cool this so much it can no longer be used to turn water into steam. I don't know how long this will take, I assume a very long time, but either way, it does mean we likely have to move away from here in the distant future and I'm hoping it's the distant future. So one slight problem is that the steam is heavier than the contaminated oxygen, which means as we do this, the contaminated oxygen is going to go all the way up here and get stuck. So we're likely going to have to make a gas pump to simply get out all the contaminated oxygen, and then when that's finished, completely seal this place up. No longer allow the duplicates access, so it's completely airtight. At least, as airtight as we can make it. Oh look, regular water. So I guess it's condensing as low as here. May be a bit of overkill then with the cooling tower, but it still looks cool, so I'm still going to do it. Ah, you all stepped in contaminated water, didn't you? Fantastic. Hello, magma! Okay, we do have magma. The problem is it's encased in neutronium. Well, we almost had magma. But look, we can see it at least. It exists! It's igneous rock, superheated, okay. Very annoying though. Oh, and someone has trench stench. That is like the worst disease we can get at the moment, since I think there's only two diseases, trench stench and the spores. I still can't figure out what the spores do, it's that not particularly effective. But trench stench makes them stink, and it upsets people nearby along with upsetting themselves. Go to the medical cot, please. 
So, a bit of an annoying thing. We actually now have so many mobs, it's causing the game to crash. If I unpause the game now, and I'm zoomed in with the mob still somewhere on the screen, it will actually crash the game after causing some truly horrific noises, with all of the audio completely glitching out. I'm not sure if this is because of the audio they are producing, or the fact that their AI is a little bit glitchy when there's so many in such a small place. But either way, I am now moving the corpses over here of our beloved minions who happen to die in this area somehow. And I may end up killing some of the mobs because it is a little bit difficult to play when I can't zoom in anywhere near this area. But on a happier note, the bio distillers have now been moved from here all the way over here, and although they are a little bit out of the way, it means this section is no longer heating up, which was causing issues for the puffs, which are now back down to 36, 33, in that region degrees Celsius, which is much better than it was as it was hitting something like 41 earlier. I think they can survive up to 47. Either way, that's all fixed, and we are now way on the way. Way on the way? We are getting there with making our steam room. Very soon, we will have unlimited water. Well, I may have been very, very bad at sorting out stress, but the cooling tower is now almost finished, and if this doesn't work efficiently enough, of course we could always start digging out this section up here and making a bit of a funnel. This funnel shape will massively increase the surface area for the steam to lose its temperature, but also it would decrease the amount of volume per square uh, meter, I suppose. Is a single tile meant to be a squared meter, I don't know, either way, we could always do that. I just like the idea of this tower, as long as it actually works. But right now, the water is condensing already, and dropping back down and rapidly cooling this section down here, which is not what we want. So the next thing I need to do then, is to completely block this section off. So, I would say probably about this height is where we're going to add the gas permeable tiles so that water will start to collect. Well, at least the water I've already cooled down will start to collect. Or we could do it here. It really depends on how early the steam is going to start condensing, and plus I don't want the water to fall back into an area where it could be hot enough that it will start to evaporate again. So maybe here then. There is one very warm section, but that will rapidly cool down, and there is this lovely stuff which doesn't conduct heat. So if we put it here, as the steam rises past this point, which it will do in the future once all of this oxygen is removed, we can start collecting the water. Or we could have it down here, oh actually we could have it down here, because there's two sections of this, and that would guarantee we collect pretty much all of the condensed water even if it is slightly more risky, in that we could end up evaporating some of the water. But I think it's worth it, so... We need to add a thing down here later, so let's do that now, and then simply turn it off or break a bit of pipe. Where are you? Plumbing! I want the liquid vent, and I want it right now, right here. That's what will drop all of our lovely contaminated water, and then the steam will go up, it will cool, and then collect here. Okay, back to work. The next thing I would like to do then is start to pump out a lot of this contaminated oxygen from the cooling tower. This way, the steam will rise a lot faster, because sadly, the contaminated oxygen will always be on top of the steam. So if we can remove all of the contaminated oxygen, or at least a good chunk of it, it means the steam will go right to the top nice and quickly, and then get cooled down. I have already started doing this up here, which has been helping a lot, but I think doing it down here as well would be really, really helpful. Also, I think only two, no, in fact, only one of our duplicants are now stressed, so everything is starting to look better. I've also got food again, so it has been a bit of an insane episode, even though most of it was probably cut because how boring and monotonous it was. But it's almost over, and we almost have unlimited water.
The gas pump is online, and by the looks of things, it is indeed working. The contaminated oxygen is becoming thinner in this area, and then once it becomes thin enough, the steam will be forced upwards to fill the void. This will work perfectly. All we need now is a little bit more water. And annoyingly, we have this little collection here, which is refusing to heat up because it's far, far too dense. So what I may need to do is break one of these tiles very briefly and just carve out one higher worth of blocks. Although that will make that area a little bit cooler for a while, it also means the water can't do this. Because that's kind of ruining the whole concept, and that's really annoying. So for now, it is cycle 222, and I think it's time to call the episode. I have been trying to build this now for far too long, with far too many things going wrong, mostly because of my own mismanagement, but now we have this, it means everything should be easier from here on in. And we still have three of the four puffed, because I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the video, but one of them died to a random heat pocket. I have no idea where the heat actually came from, it was before we fully installed these bio distillers, but a very small section of 120 degrees celsius oxygen just appeared and killed one, then went away. So from now on I'm allowing them in this whole area so that they'll be a little bit more resistant against things like that happening in the future. So, if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Oxygen Not Included is a series you would like to see continued in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye. We have the Great Steam Tree.